stood out to you about last year in the race? Um, I think I came in undertrained and a little dinged up. I had a hamstring issue, but I left like really revived. And I remember I called my coaches after the race and I was like, that's the most fun I've had in a year. And so for me, it was just reminding me that I still want to be racing. Um, I had such a good time. And, and at that time last year, I said, I'm coming back next year, no matter what the situation. So I just had a blast last year. Uh, Kevin Pates. Next month, 39 years old. Next month, I turn 40. Thanks. <laughs> so, so those rumors of your retirement, are they a I will never premature? retire, no. I'm, I'm hoping for a fall marathon. I set the goal at the beginning of the year of eight months of 75 to 80 miles a week. I'm just closed out seven months. So a uh, month from now, I'm hoping to start doing a little bit more training, bumping my mileage up a little bit, and the hopes of running a fall marathon. And I think I have one more good marathon in me, possibly two. But um, yeah, just to set the record straight, I absolutely will never retire. <laughs> I get that a lot, retired marathon, or no, I'm not actually, so. Going back to this race, does it ever get old, like coming here, and I mean, not living here anymore? Like, yeah, I mean, I come to Duluth at least once a year, usually twice, and um, no, it doesn't get old. 
I love the excitement. I, I love what I love about this race is that there are really fast people and everyone will cheer them on, but everyone will cheer just as loudly for the last person. And it's a really inclusive race, and I love that about this, and I think that that just says a lot about Duluth in particular. So I just think this is a great community encouraging race to be a part of, and it's just really fun. Other questions? How do you feel about being a role model? I know that you're an advocate for women. So how do you feel about that? Um, I feel, I mean, I don't, I don't see myself as a role model. I just think that I think it's important to live justly and to fight for things you believe in. And so whatever that is, that is. But I don't know. When you come home for this race, just because you are from here and there's a lot of demands in your time, is that easy to juggle or is it is it tough when you're here at home for race week? Um, I definitely overcommitted this particular race weekend, but it's okay because um, no matter what happens tomorrow, I'm going to leave emotionally and physically better for it. I'm going to run a hard race, which will help my training along. I'm going to leave with my spirits lifted. So. If I come back next year, I probably wouldn't commit to quite so many things as I committed to this time. But also, it's just, it's what matters. Like, Duluth has done so much for me. So when people ask me to come film a podcast or be a part of Donna's show, like, I'm going to do that. Because I wouldn't be who I am without this community. Is the Olympics, uh, you haven't ruled anything out, is the Olympics on your radar screen? I think it's more realistic that a world championship team would happen than the Olympics. I feel like U.S. women's marathoning is just such a powerhouse, mm -hmm. and it's not that I don't think I can do it, but it's, is it realistic that I can do it at my age and at this time? But I would know. I would never rule it out. I mean, if I had a great marathon this fall, then I would think a little bit longer term. Right now, I'm just kind of looking at it year by year. Okay. I mean, I'm sure I'll be at the Olympic trials. Will I be contending for a spot? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Other questions, folks? Well, we get this opportunity once here. Well, we all set? John? Yes. So, looking at last year, would you just say this year you're going to say anything better than that is a plus? Yeah, I think I think I am fitter than last year. Um, and at some point I'll be able to talk about it. The last two months I've just been very stressful on myself and my family. So, the just the fatigue I feel is pretty deep right now, so I think I'm fitter than I was last year, but I just am not totally sure. I think anything around 75 minutes I will take as a victory, but I'd like to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> anything else, anybody? All set? What, what inspires you when you go out to run a race? Um, I just love running, and I always want to know what I can get out of myself. And over the years, I had goals of winning a major or winning an Olympic medal. I don't really have goals like that anymore. Now it's really about what can I achieve for myself? Am I getting everything I can out of this body while I have it? So it's really just about just seeing as much as I can get out of myself. Thank you, Grandma. Anybody else? OK. Thank you. We wish you good luck tomorrow. Let's give her a round of applause. And so, would you uh, mind taking uh, the microphone? Sir, uh, you're from, you train in Flagstaff? I do. Uh, where are you from? Originally, Originally. from Washington State, so uh, this weather is familiar. It feels like home. <laughs> uh, what, what town? A tiny little town called Hawkinson, just north of Portland, on the Washington side. Okay. And we will open it up for questions here. They're doing the half marathon. Sarah, you just had an awesome race, 25K. You're running really well. What's different this year? Is it just all the years or is there something new? About five minutes before the 25K started, um, I took off my watch, dropped it in my backpack, and said, screw it, I'm just going to run. Um, <laughs> and I think that all of this year, I've I've learned something really interesting about my own racing in that I tend to step up to whatever challenge is presented. So when 
when it's an easy win and I don't have to run very fast, typically I don't. So um, my goal going into the 25K and also into this race, which is uh, a great race for the fast field, is to um, to go into a race where I'm likely to get my butt kicked and I have to fight my way out of that corner when I push into it. So I expect tomorrow to be pushed and to benefit from it. Do you think this attitude came from when you guys were leading the last marathon and you're like, why not me now? Start leading some races? I, I'm not sure if that's where it came from. Um, that was certainly a surprise. I once had someone ask me uh, recently, actually, when I'm 80 years old, what am I going to remember? What's the one memory that I, that'll stick? Um, seeing a wide open road in Boston with nobody else in front of me, I think, I think that's going to stick. That was 2016, right? Mm -hmm. Other questions? Mike. So your PR for the half is here. Are you in that type of shape or a little better now? Are you coming off the 25K, when was that as well? So we got yeah, the 25K was about five weeks ago. Um, when I ran 72 minutes here, it was one of those beautiful Duluth mornings. I remember hearing um, a foghorn. It was completely still, just fog gently rolling off the lake, and it was perfect, perfect weather for running. So um, I don't expect this year to be quite as good weather-wise, but if I'm honest, um, I am stupid at it right now. So if I don't PR, I'll be surprised tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Stupid fit. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. I'm writing that down so we can use it tomorrow. <laughs> Train with a big group and flag? I don't. Um, I'm kind of a kind of a lone wolf. Um, although I have two sisters up in Flagstaff, um, both of whom in the 5K have run quite fast: 1549 and 1604 for the two of them. Um, so the three of us do a lot of training together, and I, I do run occasionally with some of the other um, professional women in town. But I enjoy being out there alone on my feet. That's, that's just Elevation is what seven thousand? Right, right about seven thousand. Yeah, yeah, enough. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Any other questions? Very good. I ran a half marathon in Madrid. Um, it was uh, just the tail end of this little rock and roll marathon, or half marathon series I was doing. I really enjoyed the rock and roll experience, and so I decided I wanted to use those races to, to do some traveling. And, and then I spent some time in Europe um, running a lot, walking a lot, uh, just enjoying my time there before heading back to the 25 Was it 113? No, actually it was a lot slower than that. It was about 118, and again, I was not um, not really challenged for a win, and so it is, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, part of it being the 25k, nothing in my training up to that point had uh, had shown that I should be able to run through 10 miles at about 525 pace, but I did it with no problem. Um, and going through the half marathon at 112.45 with another two and a half miles to go tells me I should be able to break 112 and a half, unless I'm absolutely bonkers, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I should be able to do that. Other questions? What's your ultimate goal? Like, like you've heard someone else has achieved this, and if you could just meet that, you know, get us world record, record, whatever, what what would be the pinnacle on it? Well, I guess that's the thing. I'm not anybody else. I mean, if I can walk away from the sport feeling like I got every last second out of every performance I did, I'll be happy. Awesome. You ran in college? I did. Where? Yes. Um, Western Washington University, a little D2 school up near Porter, Canada, Washington. Okay. Western Washington. That's correct. Any other questions? No, we're almost okay. Thank you very much. Bravo. Uh, I'm going to get the microphone to uh, Susanna Scaroni from the United States, a wheelchair athlete competing. Um, tomorrow, you have been here before, you've had success here before. Um, competition in uh, this category is pretty tough here. Tell me a little about your thoughts about that. Um, well, uh, I'm not sure if it's been officially announced, but my teammate and fellow um, training partner, Tatiana McFadden, um, is sick and won't be at the race. So, uh, the competition level did kind of change um, quite a bit with bad news. Um, but as the way that I always race is that the clock is all over my face and So um, 
I was really excited. There's a bigger field this year and in the women's slide especially, which is always humongous and great. Um, and grandma's facilitates that because it's a great course for wheelchair athletes. It's a smooth road, so they chance the flooding or a lot less and it's fast. Or it's potentially fast. We have a, a tail on here essentially. Um, but the clock is my biggest competitor and I did already get an A standard um, in another competition in Switzerland a month ago, but my goal is to get the A standard on the marathon, which is like doing it by yourself would be very difficult, but that's gonna be my goal tomorrow. Um, so a great many, if not all, but many anyway, of the elite wheelchair athletes are training at uh, University of Illinois, Champaign, yeah. Urbana. This is a Paralympic training center down there as well. What makes that program so special down there? Um, there's a few, there's several factors that go into it. Um, in wheelchair racing, one of the biggest things to be, to have quality training is people around you. Because drafting, we utilize drafting um, in a big way. And um, especially as a woman, we have all the men in front of us too, pushing us even harder. So the Women US um, Marathon Division is it's huge in the world. Um, all of our races are pretty much, it could be Paralympic finals, um, and we get that every day at practice. So um, we have high quality training. Um, it's also it was the very first campus to actually allow people in wheelchairs to go to college. So because of that, the impacts, um, as far as accessibility, um, the ability to go to school as a, an athlete to be at a high level are there. So we have a lot of support and pleasures. Um, and it's, all of these things were recognized in communities. Um, so all these things make Champaign a really fantastic place to not only have this building, but also to get to train at this level. Now, athletes like Tatiana, Aaron, are very accomplished in another sport, a winter sport in their case. And uh, I don't know this. Are you doing another sport during another season? I am not at this point. Um, I did dabble a little bit into Nordic skiing, uh -huh. um, and then just our, with Abbott and Majors um, and wheelchair division, we now can be all year round. So we um, can have a race in Tokyo in February now, and I, I just am still PRing, so I'm just dedicating my heart to my time. Awesome. Questions? By the What is the standard? It's a 134. 134? Yeah. Okay. So it would be um, a really good day if I get that tomorrow. You know that I'm a top of my However, I did just PR last weekend, um, so I'm still having that my goal. Um, so we'll see how it goes. PR is 133.5. Yeah, well, it's 133.30 from, from Boston last year when we had a massive tailwind. Although we did, I did Boston this year, so I feel like no matter what the weather is tomorrow, I'll be ready. <laughs> I saw your race last weekend, and a lot of people like to do, especially runners, will do a part 10K a week or two before a marathon. Is that what you guys like to do as well? Um, you know, our training, we do we do, do intense things before a race, before we start to taper. Um, last weekend, and like, last weekend fit in really well. I was at the New York um, Mini 10K for women's um, race for women last weekend. And a bigger part of doing that race was just to support New York Roadrunners and um, be the first wheelchair division um, at that race. So it worked perfectly into our training cycle um, to do that in order to get ready for this. Um, but that was kind of the larger reason I went there. Um, okay. Talk about that race a little bit because you raced Tatiana there. I did. Um, Took off by the four miles. Yeah. No, I had a really good season this year. Um, I appeared in all my track events in Switzerland a month ago and um, have just, things are really clicking for me right now. And so um, I've never beat Tatiana before and now it's been like four times in the last month. So she is still a strong competitor. Um, and I just, last weekend, I don't know, I just wanted to do the best that I could. And I um, just felt like she was gonna be right behind me. And so I just didn't look behind me. Knew that she was, and that pushed me. Um, I plan to use the same kind of mindset tomorrow. That just give it all I can. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. We wish you very good luck. Uh, Taylor. Taylor,
Mark, step up to the mic, please. And, uh, first, is this the first time you've been here to this race, or? I've been to Duluth before, but this is my first time at Yeah, you're, I know you're from Wisconsin originally, right? I don't know where. Yeah. Where are you? In Wisconsin, near Milwaukee. Okay. All right. Um, should we open it up for questions? You are also training in Flagstaff, do you, right? Yeah, I'm in Flagstaff. Yeah. Do you train together ever or no? Um, we've done one or two. We've done a couple of runs together, but yeah, not, not too often. Okay. Um, but every once in a while. Okay. So, what have people told you about this race? What, what's the draw for you? I've only heard good things about it. Um, you know, I hear that it's kind of like one of our main roads in Flagstaff called Lake Mary. It just kind of rolls a little bit. Um, I've heard that it's fast on a good day. And, you know, the draw for this race for me this year was just having kind of a crummy race at Boston. Um, with the conditions being the way that they were, I wasn't able to finish the race. And I was really fit and ready to run fast. And I think being here and being able to do this race kind of gives me the opportunity to show the fitness that I kind of had at Boston. Um, on the course tomorrow. How far were you into that race? I think I dropped right before 13 miles. Okay. And you were hypothermic. Yeah, I was unfortunately I became hypothermic and you know it's the first race that I've never finished and I think that that was harder mentally than the physical repercussions of the race. You know, so you in the you had a pretty fast debut between I actually expect it faster. Um, I, I kind of set big goals for myself, and when we went into marathon training, I think that my coach, uh, Coach Ben, he was like, okay, well, maybe you like dabble around like the 230 range, and I was like, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know, like I want to go sub 230 easily. And then with our training and everything leading into it, I kind of set my goal on like 227 in that range. Um, and at Houston, I think that I was on pace for that through 24 miles. So I was pretty close to it. Um, just kind of bought the last couple of miles. But I think that the progression that I had leading into doing marathons was pretty steady. You know, in college, I was a mile and 5,000 meter runner. Um, and then after graduating, I kind of just moved up the distance, did a little bit more track, and then started to dabble in the half marathon, and then just decided, decided to take a swing in the marathon. Unfortunately, I can't go. I'm sorry? How many years after college did you go to marathon? Let's see, 2009 was when I graduated, 2015 was my first marathon. So, yeah, I had a daughter right out of college, so I kind of had a couple years where I wasn't really doing a whole lot, um, just kind of settling into that. Life and then I moved out to Flagstaff. Mike, what level of excitement do you have coming into this race, knowing that the returning champion is back, as well as a previous returning champion who's the course record holder? I mean, there's a big story to be told tomorrow, but uh, I'm sure, what is your excitement? Oh, no, it's super exciting. You know, I think that people that are great runners help to elevate other people. So it'll be great to be out there and have people helping to push push me and be helping to push them. And hopefully, you know, we can go through that course tomorrow and have some really fast and amazing times. Okay. Other questions here? Yeah? Jack? The last couple of years we've seen them go pretty fast. Are you gonna are you gonna just follow or are you gonna run your own race? Kind of depends on how fast. Um, you know, I, I don't want to be careless and just like go out and, you know, blow it. I think that going out and having some composure and knowing what I'm capable of would be the smartest thing. So, you know, trying to roll through the half at a, a fast, but I don't know, modest pace, I guess. You know, just trying to stay within my limits so that I can get to that finish and feel like I gave everything that I had if I had stuff going into those last few miles. You said you weren't very happy with your uh, the results of Boston. Do you think that's given you an incentive to work hard, train for Grand Definitely. I mean, that was the whole point of kind of coming here was just trying to get a little bit of redemption.
redemption going, I mean, coming off of Boston because, like I said, I was so fit and I didn't really get to show any of that fitness like many of the women um, that day. So it was an interesting segment just because I had had my Boston segment, which was the most the most miles that I had ever done and the fastest I had ever done a whole marathon segment. Um, so I had that segment and then kind of had to do a condensed, shortened segment for this one. Um, kind of just piggy tailing or piggybacking off of the other one. Did you take recovery time after Boston from the training? I did, yeah. I took about a week off, um, didn't really do anything, and then the next week I kind of jumped back into it, um, not doing anything crazy, um, and then just kind of slowly worked my way back up. I'd say that I had a good solid like three weeks where I would consider we were, where I would say we were doing like solid big workouts, marathon specific workouts. Then might say different, but that's how I looked at it. Any other questions, folks? Kara? Um, you ran 433 doors in a mile this year. How do you do that? Like, why are you <laughs> so fast? Getting ready for at least a month, probably your build up in Boston. Yeah. Super fit over the mile distance now running 26.2 of them. How does that happen? I mean, I, I love the mile. Being a miler in college, it was kind of, I always say, like, I'm kind of my, I'm a miler at heart. I don't really get to race it anymore, but it's always such a fun race to be able to jump into and hopefully have a good result. And that race was incredibly fun just because I haven't been able to do one in so long. And, just feeling like I still had that pop in my legs it was a really fun feeling and knowing that if I were to like actually train for it I could probably hopefully break 430 which I don't know, might be on radar sometime. How will that help you tomorrow to like have that kind of speed? What does that do for your arm? Um, I mean hopefully you're able to like dig down deep and channel that speed when you're going to the finish, you know, in a neck and neck race. So hopefully, you know, if that's the case, I'm able to do that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Wish you good luck. Sarah, I'd like you to please come up to the microphone, please. Our course record holder uh, to 26.32 set in 2016. When was your last marathon? It was last year, November, Philadelphia. Good for me, but I was happy to make that race. Thank you. Hey, you're still living, am I right, a lot of the time in Santa Fe, or am I wrong? Not? Yes, but for now, I come from Kenya. I was in Kenya okay. for this all this year. How long have you been here in Duluth? I came in on Tuesday. Tuesday? Wednesday means what? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Yes. okay. Questions, my friends. Chad, we'll start with you. Sarah, where's your fitness right now? Sorry, can you? Where, where, where do you feel like your fitness is right now? Is it top level? Is it? Oh, right now, I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow, but what I hope, let me just say that. Yeah, because I'm not sure, because I've never raced since November till tomorrow, so I guess I'm just waiting what will come out tomorrow. Are your workouts? Are your workouts good? Are you feeling your fitness and workouts? I feel good, so I'm waiting for tomorrow. Thank you, Chair. Other questions? Being, being the course record holder out, what does Grandma's Marathon mean to you in your career and in going to tomorrow? What is Grandma's fit on your love of marathons? For me, in Grandma's, when I'm here, I feel like it's the rest that I feel. It's in my heart, I feel something that I did. It's made me feel like coming back every year. So last year I missed, but I was not feeling good, but I, 
I always feel like being here because many people I know them. I feel like we see this, the same people every year. And I'm very thankful because to be here again. Do you like the course? Is, is there something about the course you'd like? Yeah, I like the course. Do you like the weather? Yes, I like the weather too. Because even in Kenya it was the same weather, it's raining too. So we have been training with the rain. Yes, so. Sarah, do you know how many marathons you've run in your career? Just curious. I'm very sorry because I've never count. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's a challenge. I have to go up that one. I have to to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions? All set, everybody? Okay, well, Sarah, we wish you good luck Thank you. tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Good luck to all of the wonderful women up here. A round of applause for you all tonight. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with the men, okay? Thank you.